Welcome back, I am Captain Xavier, and today's Q&A comes to you from behind my veritable fortress of fan mail packages, which is amazing, and I cannot wait to open them. But first, the Q&A. Mm. Nickel Mods Nerf. How much pizza do you eat in one sitting, and what is your favorite animal? I can eat about half of a large pizza myself. Oh, uh, more if I'm spreading it out over an evening. And my favorite animal is the Corvus Corax, or the Common Raven. Trico Gamer 2 Is it possible to put a drain blaster further into a firefly shell? Well, as I have said, with enough epoxy, anything's possible. Uh, but it won't fit easily. The, the spot that I put it in mine is pretty much perfect. Uh, it, it matched up perfectly. The cylinder of the drain blaster, the back end, fit right where the cylinder did on the uh, Firefly. And if you put it any further back, then you're going to have to cut a lot more of the shell. And also, the, the grip is not going to line up with anywhere near where the old grip was as far as... Well, I guess the trigger isn't really where it used to be anyway. But yes, you could if you didn't mind cutting the shell up a lot more. QJ500. Are you going to make a personal rapid strike? Yes. Cat Pirate. Do you like metal? Yes, I'm a huge fan of metal. Uh, I'm probably most partial, honestly, to steel. I mean, it is what ushered in the modern era. Uh, I would love to work with titanium sometime, but it's really, really hard and really, really expensive, and I don't know that I have the tools to work it. Um, aluminum is actually really nice to work with because while it's uh, actually stronger than most people think, people think of aluminum as being soft, but that's only because we usually make it so thin. But the reason you can make it so thin is because it's actually very strong. Uh, if it was weaker when you rolled it as thin as like tin foil or paper or uh, uh, pop cans, it would it would break. But because aluminum is actually very strong, you're able to do that. The reason I don't work with aluminum as much as I do steel is it looks different. You can tell even at a distance that something is made of aluminum. It just has a different uh, sheen to it than uh, steel does, and I prefer steel. I also prefer um, actual steel, mild steel, to stainless steel. Stainless steel also has a very different look that I'm not nearly as much of a fan. I do not like brass at all. I don't like the look of it. I don't like decorating things with it. Uh, but I have made things with it, and they did turn out beautiful, but they were for other people who like brass. So... Yeah, that's my thoughts on metal. Lucas Fan. Thoughts on Firefly and Serenity. I am an utter brown coat, I'll have you know. Uh, but I didn't find out about Firefly until after the show had already been cancelled. So I got to sit down and binge watch the whole thing in one sitting on DVD. And then discovered that there was no more. And of course, like everyone else, was uh, disturbed and uh, annoyed. Uh, and then when Serenity came out, I thought it was fantastic, and I loved it, and I went with my friend, and it was all beautiful and tragic and all of that. Um, in hindsight, I'm actually kind of glad that Firefly only went as long as it did, because the various Joss Whedon shows that went much longer tended to get really bad after a couple of seasons because they just ran out of ideas. Whereas there are no bad episodes of Firefly. They're all amazing episodes, and they're fantastic. Uh, I would love to know... I'd love there to be more. I'd like there to be novels. I know there were graphic novels, and I, I've seen most of them and enjoyed them. Um, but I, I'd love to see more about the war and more about that universe in general. Uh, I'd love it if another show came out that was in the same universe. Probably different characters, maybe a different ship. Um, maybe more of, you know, more about the war... Uh, or all of that, but, uh, yeah. Alex Nam, do you like my chemical romance? We've, we've never actually met, so. Mm -hmm. Moist drapes. That's just. Will you ever give us any backstory lore on your Lego Castle universe? I have actually been, I've long considered, uh, starting a new series simply entitled Storytime with Captain Xavier, in which I tell stories of the lore of Captain Xavier of uh, Captain Xavier de Normandy, my medieval French character, uh, stories about all of the weird medieval wars that I've fought in and mercenary work I've done there, stories of all of the HVZ stuff I've done, stories of actual uh, private security stuff, um, my Lego, my Lego lore goes back to when I was about 12, probably younger, so it's a very, very long and rich history that has just been building and building. I actually started writing it down once, but uh, didn't keep it up and long since lost that notebook. 
Um, but uh, yeah, I, I may indeed someday go into the some of the backstory. The current castle actually doesn't have the same backstory as most of my previous stuff, as this is a newer castle, but I do have a lot of ideas on who built the castle, why it's there, why there's so many tunnels and all of that stuff, so. Yeah, that is distinctly a possibility. The Fandom Connoisseur. Would you ever mod a Stampede to fire Stefan darts? Also, have you ever considered adding a Scar Barrel to Ire for increased accuracy? No and no. Uh, I, while I understand the, the concept and, you know, the, the advantages of short darts, Stefan darts, uh, and they're now, you know, Artifact is making them themselves uh, and make magazines for it and all of that. I probably will never switch to them because I like to be able to pick up ammo off of the battlefield. And that's much more difficult when you have that specialized of an ammo type. Um, as far as Scar Barrel, since Ire doesn't have a sealed breach, a uh, Scar Barrel wouldn't work. Um, now, if I made a Scar Barrel for the uh, Titan, that might help. I actually had somebody who was 3D printing me parts who was trying to 3D print a scar barrel but uh, wasn't able to get it to work or ran out of time or whatever. Um, but that's one I might consider, but I don't think it would ever be worth it for the games I play. Um, anything that would have enough power to be to benefit from uh, a scar barrel as far as range and accuracy would be more powerful than I'd probably be allowed to use in like HVZ anyway, so it wouldn't really matter. But uh, yeah, no plans at the current time. Rispy Crepe 27. What do you think is the best best nerf melee weapon? I, as far as like the official stuff that they've produced, I haven't actually tried using any of them in combat that I can think of. So I haven't the foggiest idea. Um, the mace is obviously thoroughly unnecessary because why are you ever going to need something with that much mass? Uh, the axe is useful if you're fighting people with shields because you can hook the shield with the axe and stab around it. Um, I personally favor uh, rapier style combat, so uh, any of the lighter swords that are you know long and thin and, and fast and swishy pokey um, would be more of my style. Dark boy! Exclamation mark. What is your favorite Springer Blaster? Well, Ire. I assume you mean stock. Um, it's kind of a toss-up between the Elite Alpha Trooper and the Sentinel um, are my two current favorites. Uh, as far as War Blasters, my Elite Alpha Trooper is the one I use the most. I've used my uh, Sentinel a couple of times. Uh, I actually want to downgrade the Spring. I put K26 in it. Uh, and I didn't reinforce enough inside, and I know it's going to break, so I'd actually, I'm actually planning to downgrade the spring a little bit before I start using that in wars more often. But I'd really like to, because I, it's just such a fun blaster. The Fallout Boys! As exploration series goes, Star Trek or Stargate? See, now this is the kind of question I like, because this gives me something to actually compare. Um, but that's a really... that's a tough question. I got to about season 5 or 6 of SG-1, and I never saw any of the other ones. Uh, never finished the series, though. Uh, but I really, really liked it. It, like Star Trek, addressed a lot of moral issues, because they were constantly running into bad guys who were doing things that were, you know, questionable, and they weren't sure, or, do we have a right to change this? Should we step in? They kind of had a prime directive like Star Trek did, but not quite the same. Uh, and they interfered with a lot of stuff. But then so did Star Trek. I mean, every other episode, they break the Prime Directive. Uh, and they have whole movies that are basically just, when should the Prime Directive be broken? Um, I think Stargate is a little more relatable, because the technology that the humans started with was current technology, uh, whereas Star Trek is obviously far into the future, and it's a little bit harder to really, truly identify with their society because it's so much different than our own. Queen 357. How do you feel about the new GameStop exclusive Mandalorian Apollo? Uh, I think it's neat. I think it's cool that they did that. Uh, but I'm not a huge fan of the Apollo, so it doesn't really blow my skirt up in a, oh god, I must have it sort of way. Um, and painting up the rival mask to look vaguely like a Mandalorian mask uh, also kind of 
nah, because there are much better replica Mandalorian masks out there, or helmets that you could buy that would achieve the same thing of giving you eye protection, so. Um, I think it's neat. I would love to see other exclusives from other series, uh, but I, I'd love it if they picked um, a more effective war primary blaster. Dev Alvarez, what is the most valuable possession other than iron? Well, single possession, probably my car. Um, kind of collective possession, either my Lego collection or my computer. Probably my Lego collection, really, if you consider that one item. Um, but a single item, my car, because it's a car. How about the... I missed. Caleb Carter, thoughts on dual wrist-mounted proton packs. That's not actually how he worded it. I paraphrased it because his question was about half a page long. Uh, but his idea was basically, if you've seen Out of Dart's Proton Pack, it's a backpack-fed um, rival blaster, and his thought was to have dual ones mounted on your wrist, so you just... Bah, bah, bah. And I think that's an absolutely amazing idea. I do think, however, that you are underestimating the size of rival um, flywheel cages, because they're not the svelte little ones you see for... Uh, elite blasters, they're actually pretty honking huge. You'd be better off um, mounting them on the top rather than underneath and then breaking your wrists to fire it. I think that would be fantastic. Um, having the two feed mechanisms would be a little bit complicated, but uh, it could definitely be done. Definitely be done. I like to do just a short one. Like, not a full proton pack, but just a... a maybe a one shot or two one or two bursts worth of balls um you could almost you could actually do that spring loaded uh if you had a long enough uh if you just got a bunch of uh rival magazine springs and loaded them into a tube and then had a pusher i think you could actually probably make just a really long flexible rival magazine uh, that was all spring powered so you didn't have to have a blower um the rate of fire might be a little bit lower, but you could also add more spring to increase that. I think that'd be a fantastic idea. Creed King 18. Do you know about Minecraft? And if so, would you play it? Well, as I have not been living in a cave with no electricity, yes, I have in fact heard of Minecraft. Uh, no, I don't play it because it makes me motion sick. Void Walker, Captain, what is the weirdest thing you've done at a Nerf War? The weirdest thing. I don't know if I'd say that the operating the Owen tank was weird, but that was definitely one of the coolest things I've ever done. That was where uh, one of the nerfers brought his son, who is uh, very disabled and is in a wheelchair, uh, and he mounted a Vulcan to it, and I got to drive it around the battlefield, hosing everybody. And between us, we actually scored, we actually won several rounds as the Owen tank. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Update, upgrading the, uh, the the firepower and hopefully the armor for the next war. It will be fantastic. I'm so looking forward to it. Mid South Blaster Refiner. Any plans to go to End War Foam Con next year? I don't know what I'm having for dinner tonight. Must that's what I'm doing a year from now. So not really. I would love to go to an event that big, but I don't want to have to fly to the other side of the country to do it. I'd rather go to one on the West Coast. You know, maybe posted in California, or where I'd love to have it. Is, of course up here in the Pacific Northwest uh, at one of the uh, big batteries, either Fort Warden or one of the other two forts that were built during World War I in case somebody decided to shell Seattle. Uh, there are three major forts. They're, they're all parks now. Um, Fort Warden has the old barracks are still there that can be used for housing. Um, I know camping is allowed. I don't know if they'd let us do a multi-day Nerf War there just because of the mess it would make on the National Park. Um, but something like that, uh, a, a national event hosted somewhere in the Pacific Northwest up here would be something I would love to try to organize someday. Um, or maybe one a little, you know, California, there's probably more nerfers down there, but, uh, that I'd be willing to drive down. Me and our out of darts and Brent could all carpool down there and run them up. Tristan Sisk. Thoughts on a cyberpunk-styled sawed-off vagabond with an integrated sling fire stuck. I think that'd be lovely. I'm more diesel punk than st uh, cyberpunk myself, uh, but I think it could be made to look really, really cool, especially with, you know, LEDs and all of that, since the Vagabound has the clear sections on it. So, uh, yeah, go for it. I'd love to see that. Jonathan Melendez. 
Would you consider an archer loadout for HVZ? Good God, no. Uh, that would, you would die. You would die so hard and so fast. Um, there's just no way to keep up a fast enough or reliable enough rate of fire. Uh, the ammo takes up way too much room. You'd never be able to carry enough of it. Uh, and, you know, no, just not for HVZ. For wars, I've seen successful archers, but definitely not for HVZ. At least I wouldn't. John Jackson, Sir Captain Xavier, what is your favorite non-nerf YouTube channel? The Great War. Uh, and I highly recommend it. You should go look it up. You should go watch it. It will take you a couple of months to get caught up on it all. Uh, the Great War is uh, a, a channel that is showing World War I. And they're doing it in an absolutely magnificent way. They started in 2014 at the 100 year anniversary of the beginning of World War I. And have been doing an episode every week. Every week since then. So every week they do a, a, an episode that recaps everything that happened this week a hundred years ago. So it is one of the most in-depth looks at um, the First World War that I have ever seen because they're doing it week by week, little by little. What happened this month? What happened this week? What happened this week? The battles that happened, the, the major events, the, the important people that were killed, um, you know, the, the political stuff that's going on, who joined the war, who left the war, who surrendered, who capitulated. Um, and it's absolutely fascinating. It is very, very well done. Um, and then they also do a lot of special episodes. So they do ones that are uh, who did what. So they're talking about all of the major players, the, the leaders of all the countries, the King of England, the Tsar of Russia, the, the Kaiser, uh, and you know what parts they played, as well as all of the major generals, as well as all of the major, you know, the prime ministers, uh, and also notable figures. So they have an episode on Tolkien, and they had an episode on Hitler, and they had an episode on uh, Rommel, who, you know, Hitler and Rommel, obviously big Nazis in World War II, but they also were Germans in World War, well, Hitler was Austrian, but uh, Rommel was German. They fought in World War I, uh, and it's absolutely fascinating look. Uh, they also do episodes on um, things like shell shock and how it was handled by all the different countries, uh, special episodes on um, weapons from the different countries, uniforms from the different countries. So there are hundreds and hundreds of episodes of it. Uh, and new episodes, at least two episodes every week. One is the regular weekly episode, and then they have at least one special episode. And now they're actually doing uh, tours where they're doing episodes on site, uh, like fortresses and uh, uh, monuments and cemeteries and battlefields. And it's, it's just absolutely an amazing series, and I highly recommend it. The Great War. Go watch it. I, Guy Gaming, have you ever made a sniper for your armor sets? Yes, uh, you could technically argue that m several of the attachments that I have made for Ire qualify as um, sniper attachments. The brass breach that I made for her, the bolt action brass breach, is you know, definitely a sniper attachment. Any of the single barrels I use as sniper attachments. Uh, I also have a shoulder mounted Titan that uses any of Ire's attachments, so I've used that as a sniper attachment just by single loading and you know, firing single rounds off my shoulder. Um, but other than that, I really haven't bothered. I haven't, like, built a, uh, a brass breached long shot or anything like that. Uh, or, you know, an XBZ long strike. I've considered it. Um, but ultimately, it just doesn't fit my play style. And so I haven't bothered. But uh, I might someday. DW-Thomas-C. Have you considered making an overly large blaster that can be flipped over to have another blaster type on the other side? So, like, a stampede and then set up to be like a breached long shot, whichever you want, uh, for more controlled fire. Once again, arguably the, uh, the attachment, my Titan attachment on Ire, kind of fits that description of having a full auto magazine fed blaster on one side and then a much more controlled slow rate of fire on the other. Um, but what you're describing is you know, an, an over, over, <laughs> where you flip the whole gun over. No, uh, that sounds cumbersome and awkward, but uh, I'd love to see one done. Lathan Belansky. Hey Cap, do you think there is a way to make a double breech shoot both barrels at once? Uh, yeah, you could just take out the air restrictor and it would do that. It wouldn't fire very well though because it doesn't quite have the air capacity. Now, if you could somehow put a second plunger tube in there, then it would definitely be able to do it. Or if you put an XBZ in there, replaced the plunger with an XBZ and took out the air restrictors, 
uh, then you would do it, and you could use the, the original guns pump to do the to pump the air tank. Um, but just taking out the air restrictors would technically do it. But once again, you're not going to have a particularly good blaster. I mean, it, it could I believe it could take a K26, but it was a little bit uh, I don't know about it. Um, but depending on what range you want, if you're playing a game where rival rounds do more damage, uh, you could use that for close range, which is when you should be using a shotgun anyway. Uh, so, yeah, it could be done. Preston Jones. Craftsman, DeWalt, or Black & Decker? Well, Craftsman, 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 Craftsman. I'm gonna go with Craftsman. Griffin Tetter. Will you ever hydro dip a Nerf Blaster? Probably not. I mean, I, I might be talked into doing it for a commission if I ever start taking commissions again. Uh, but I'm definitely going to hydro, hydro dip one for myself because I my, my paint scheme just doesn't need it. Uh, and that's just a whole skill set I don't currently have and I don't have the equipment for it. I know it's not all that difficult, but uh, it's, I, it's one more thing I'd have to have materials for and learn to do and I currently don't have any reason to. So. And finally, Mr. R3Z, Captain Xavier. What are some tools that would be needed for modding? To get started, really all you absolutely need is a good screwdriver set that will open up uh, a blaster because that's all you need to do spring upgrades. Uh, if you want to get into more complicated stuff, you're going to want a drill and you're definitely going to need a Dremel, a good file set, um, either side cutters or bolt cutters to cut the heavier spring. You can also cut it with a Dremel, but uh, it's a lot more difficult than just using bolt cutters. Um, you're definitely going to want uh, a soldering station so that you can do flywheels and other electronics. Um, for that, you're also going to want um, a testing setup, which really isn't that difficult. It's basically a 9 volt battery with leads so that you can test your connections as you go because you don't want to test with your LiPo because if you've wired it wrong, your LiPo will explode, whereas a 9 volt will just get annoyed. Um, that's really the, the bulk of what you're going to need. Um, most of what I do involves a Dremel and a drill and files and a screwdriver. Um, the power tools that I have are definitely useful when you start getting into big complicated integrations. A bandsaw, a jigsaw, belt sander, drill press. Um, but those aren't actually necessary. You can get away with a hacksaw and sandpaper and files. Uh, will allow you to do pretty much all of that. A drill, you can just use a drill instead of a drill press. Drill press is just easier for a lot of things. Um, but, uh, yeah. You also want to know where you can get cheap darts. Um, Amazon is where I order mine. You can also get them on eBay now. Uh, there's lots of different sources. Wish can get cheap darts. It, it depends on what darts you're after. I like FVJs. Um, I haven't done any serious trials of comparing different uh, darts in a while. Uh, as far as I, for a while there, I bought from a bunch of different sources, found the one I liked, and then ordered a thousand of them. Um, and I haven't, that was like three years ago, and I'm still using that same set of thousand darts. I'm getting down to the last couple hundred now, just because they get lost and broken and whatnot. Um, and so I, I'm about ready to do another order of a bunch of different kinds and compare them all and, and all of that. But, uh, yeah, shop around. There's lots of different places. They can be gotten pretty cheap. Um, so, yeah. Alright! On to the swag. And it's mighty swag it is. Alright, well, I have a postcard and five packages. And fabulous packages they appear to be. We will start with the postcard. It is, of course, the flag of Arizona, I believe. Yep. The Arizona state flag was adopted by the legislature in 1917. The top half of the flag represents the original um, 13 colonies of the United States and the western setting. The copper star in the center identifies Arizona as the largest copper producing state in the Union. This was sent to me by a fan. He didn't write anything on it, but uh, that's pretty cool. I did not know that about the Arizona state flag. So those are, of course, the original colonies. And the star, and it, you know, is the sun, because Arizona's hot, and all of that. That's really cool. This will go in my collection of awesome things that I've been sent to people. Alright, let's start with the small package. We got this little one that apparently came from Singapore. Mm. Shiny stuff. 
do the thing. First up, we have an eight round hammer shot cylinder. That is just shiny. Look at that. It's the Gavin Fuzzy. I think I have one of these actually. That is beautiful. And spare rotation mechanism. And. Oh, good lord. That is just pretty. Ooh. You, sir. Now look, a note. Hello, Captain Xavier. Greetings from Singapore. I hope you enjoy the Hammershot cylinders you previously purchased. I now present you the next piece in the Hammershot puzzle, the barrel kit. Loosely based on the Duke MK-10 hand cannon from Destiny. Installed, it should be straightforward. There are some instructions if you have any questions. The orange should match the hammer shot and your loadout, hopefully. Also included is another 8-round cylinder for good measure. Hope you like it. Would love it if you could make a video on it. If you do, please leave a link to my Facebook and Etsy. Um, yes, I have used yours in both um, my War Primary... Or no, my HVZ. My HVZ... Hammer shot has this. My war has the the seven, um, and in Jomo's, which I have finally finished and will be getting it sent to him. Yes, I will make a video on putting this in a kit. Um, I think I actually have a metal hammer shot kit around here that I might just use for this because it would match this cylinder nicely. Um, and yes, there will be a video. There will be links. Gavin Fuzzy, he makes the stuff. That is awesome. Thank you so much. I think you're, yeah, I love, I love having a YouTube channel. Okay, that is super, super cool. You feel free to ship me all the free stuff you want. Um, and I will give you all the publicity that I can. Not that your awesomeness really needs it, but you're getting it anyway. Sweet. Gavin Fuzzy, buy his stuff. He's awesome. Okay, let's go for the next one. We have a bagage. Bags! Just what I always wanted. Oh ho! Very good, very good. What on earth happened here? Am I supposed to make loading easier, maybe? Alright, so this, for those of you who don't know, is the Double Rush. It is a six round cylinder, uh, two dart firing Boomco blaster, so it fires. Two Boomco darts at once. It is essentially a Boomco shotgun pistol, which, why would I want one of those? It's not like that's my thing or anything. Um, Walcom and I did a video on putting K26 in this thing, and it can actually take K26. We had to reinforce a bunch of stuff. I don't know that I'm going to put that heavy of a uh, spring in here just because um, I'd worry about it wearing out faster than I want. But he sent me two so that I can upgrade one uh, and send it back, which I absolutely will do. And then the other one is for me. So, that is awesome. Thank you so much. Bags! Bags. More bags. What do we got? We're gonna do this one next. But first, Cinema Magic! One of the advantages of being an adult is you can do things like open your presents before Christmas. Uh, this package was sent to me by uh, one of my favorite fans, one of my earliest fans. Uh, and he has sent me so much awesome stuff. Uh, over the last couple of months. I pretty much, any time I do a build, I end up using at least one of the tools that he sent me because he's just that awesome. Uh, he is also my source for most of my catch springs, which I'm hoping there may be some more of those in here. Um, he is the fellow that I made the Zapper Blaster for. I wanted to make him something to show my appreciation for all that he'd sent me, and I asked him what he wanted, and then he said he wanted a Night Finder painted to look like a Zapper Blaster, and I said, sure, I can do that, but what I was really thinking is I can do better than that. Uh, and I made the Zapper Blaster and sent it to him, and he has sent me a box! And, um... I think there's some good stuff in here, and I don't want to wait until Friday to open it, so I'm opening it now, but filming it so that I can edit it into the video later. Ha ha ha, I love video. All right. Incidentally, there's a picture of Tom Hanks painted on it, or uh, printed out and taped to it. I don't know why, but it's fantastic. 
Ooh, look at the goods. Swedish fish! You spoil me, sir. Fast no. What do we got? <laughs> Wads of cash and a fortune cookie. That, that is magnificent. I told him that uh, I would uh, upgrade and fix this demolisher for him for uh, a bag of cash. And he sent it in a fast no. Oh, good lord. Good lord. What have you done, sir? What? What have you done? Oh, see? And this, he said he had the uh, orange one that he was going to send me. So this one will get painted up in the X-Strike colors um, and become my blaster to go with my grenade launcher. I'm probably also going to do one um, in the gray, in the original colors, just so I'll have one that actually matches the Super Soaker. Uh, but this one will come up in my colors and be my, my air tank pistol. All right, internals for the... Things. Oh, Skittles, Skittles, the good stuff. Ooh. Oh, what is this? Orchids. <gasps> they do still have lime. That makes me happy. Peach, red apple, cherry. Not a fan of peach, but uh, we'll see how I like it. All right, the rest of that. Aha! Uh -huh. Twix. He is good to his word. Cash and Twix. And then springs. We've got some number 49 springs. Somebody had mentioned those. Holy moly. And uh, these look like number 55 springs. A boatload of those. People ask me, where do you get your springs? Well, they show up in the mail magically. All you have to do is start a YouTube channel and get big enough for people to send you free stuff. And you too can have all the springs you ever needed. Good lord. And here's the good stuff. This is one that people ask me all the time. Where do you get your catch springs? And most of my previous catch springs have come from um, blasters that I have killed. But then I found Andrew, and he sends me number 55 Fastenal springs by the boatload. And this is some of the best um, upgrade catch spring I have yet found. So there you have it. Number 55 fast and all compression springs are where I get most of my catch springs and now I should be good for a good long while. All right, fantastic stuff. I am looking forward to tinkering with this. We'll get this put back together and upgraded. Uh, the usual upgrades, motors, rewiring, batteries. Nothing terribly complicated. I don't recall whether he wanted a paint job or not. If he wants one, he'll get one. Um, I had not seen these Skittles before. That makes me happy that lime is still a thing. All right, I am going to go cool off because it's entirely too hot. Uh, I'm going to eat a Twix and probably play some video games. So, onward. Okay, so, yeah. For those of you who wonder where I get my springs, I get them from this awesome guy. All right. Take a look at this long, skinny one. Good lord. Oh, good lord. Open first. You talked me into it. <clears throat> Greetings, Chelo. Tis I, William, your friendly neighborhood cat pirate. Now, the first thing that you will find is my trusty Rapid Strike, whom I have not the creative mindset nor knowledge to name. However, once it... I have not decided which gender yet... Thus, why I'm referring to it as it. Has undergone the changes you bestow upon it, I will be forced to name it something. Our agreement, if you do not recall, was for the Rapid Strike to get her internal electronics replaced with better wires, motors, batteries, and a voltmeter in exchange for what I'm about to describe. The first of the three is the Captain, the Marvel Captain America Brigade Blaster. Now... All I could really find was that it is suspiciously similar internals to a Maverick, cost around 30 bucks, and shot darts that look like darts. Interesting. Now, I highly doubt that the curator has one, if he will, so he will want it. All I will say is that you should only trade it for something really good. I have only ever seen two of them, I, uh, neither of which have darts for them, but that's not... Such a bad thing, as range claims are about 20 feet with them. 
The air restrictors have been removed. I kept the pieces and sent them to you. Next is the Tech 5. This was something you can easily Google. I'm surprised you've never found one in your thrift hauls. It's basically a knockoff Maverick. It has a slimmer profile and is amazing air seal. Uh, for my... Do me a favor on camera, please. Pop out the cylinder, prime it, and then press your finger against the seal, that black ring, and fire. Then move your finger away from it. Lastly, the fuse fire, which needs no introduction except that it has had the locks removed. For more info, watch Walcom's video on it. Now you can do a Catpert, Canateki K-1086 with the Sentinel-1, Tech-5, and Brigade Blaster. Sounds legit. I have also put some goodies in here as well. A bandolier for you to do whatever you desire with. Cheap Chinese ball shooter, the yellow thing. A cat pirate. A signed pirate blaster. An old laser tag gun. A blow gun with dart holder. Another missile. The world's worst nerf gun, the little baby one in there. A Wii call, uh, game for Walcom. And a broken double strike. I hope these gifts give you great joy. If you have any questions, let me know in this video or in a DM. This is Cat Pirate signing off. P.S. I may have hired a bounty hunter to find the hidden bunker. Let me know if you find him. Well, I will have you know that the bunker is uh, guarded not only by pirates, but by ninjas. That's right. I have both pirates and ninjas working for me. I'm just that good. All right. Let's take a look at the thing. This is the... Oh, it's even got bowls in it. They're... Fuzzy. That's weird. I feel dirty. All right, we have... Some sort of first order looking thing. Or maybe it's Clone. Clone Wars. Um... Well, that's kind of cool. It's like an actual disintegrating belt. I have a friend who, uh... Good lord, it never ends. I had a friend who actually had a, a Browning 1919 30 cal. It was a lot of fun to mount to a four-wheeler and take shooting in the woods. Okay, we have the Captain America Mavericky looking thing, sure enough. Looks... Like a maverick, smells like a maverick, but had, uh, yeah, interesting, clearly dart posts rather than uh, a seal. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but there's dart posts down in the cylinder. Smaller handle than a maverick, though. A tiny little laser tag blaster. That is Laser Challenge Pro. <laughs> Pro. Aha! The Tech 5. Yeah, I have never seen one of these. Cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that has a really good air seal. Okay. Aha! The Fuse Fire. Which has the distinction of having an, one of the only Nerf blasters that I know of that has a proper inline magazine. Uh, you can load it from the back and just top it off as you go, and then every time you prime it, it loads the next round. Um, which is... Oh, and it lights up. I assume it fired glow-in-the-dark rounds, so... Um, that is really cool. I, I'm going to have to put together a, a, rival, or a, a Vortex war loadout for the next war just so that I can use this. That is awesome. Thank you. Uh, blowgun with dart holder. Cool. Ah, one of these little launchers from McDonald's. A broken double strike. Yep. Busted. Hmm. Yeah, I wonder. Let's see. More parts. Oh, the actual... Actually, has <laughs> the... Ha! You never find the darts for those things. You see them at Goodwill all the time, but they never have darts. All right. Aha! A rocket with its head gun, but we can fix that. 
I have another type of ammo for ire to fire. Looks like a whistler. The Nerf Wii game! Sweet! I think my mother has a Wii. Maybe I'll take it there instead. I'd have no idea what this is from. Anybody? Anybody? Bueller? No? More of the belt. A ninja star! Sweet, see? Told you. Ninjas. A pirate pistol! Yep, see? Pirates. Ninjas. Oh. Sounds like it's broken. Cat pirate. Shame. Maybe I can fix it. Maybe I'll just put it on the wall as a memento from your friendly cat pirate. One cat pirate. Big long length of actual disintegrating belt. I have a plan. We'll see if it'll work though. Awesome. All right. And last but not least, of course, we have a dart, because you always got to send a dart, and a rapid strike, which is going to be getting basic internal modifications. Nothing terribly fancy. Motors, wiring, battery, uh, which is fairly simple, but, uh, you know, if you don't have the tools or the... Uh, know how it you really can't but when you do it's it's not terribly difficult so that will be added to the list hopefully I will remember it well, lots of fun stuff I yeah I can in fact now do a whole episode just on the blasters that cat pirate has sent me very cool all right back in the box Thank you for reminding me about the Sentinel-1. I still need to do that one. Finally, the big box! Which I seem to recall he said I need to open from the bottom. <laughs> Dear Chalo, happy Fan Mail Friday. I wanted to do something a little different with the letter, so I just... Uh, nope, don't know what that word is. Little note in the box, so have fun, sincerely. Robert... We'll go with Robert. All right. Good. Oh, little. Oh, I see little notes throughout the package. What do we got here? Hola, el capitano. Please use one of these blasters in your K26 series, and pass the other to Walcom for tag back. Ha! Like he will get one of these from me. Um, awesome pirate pistols. I'm now up to, I believe, six. Seven, if you count the broken one I got from Cat Pirate. Um, but yes, I will. I will give one to Walcom to do a tag back on, and I will try K26. I might try the broken one, <laughs> just so I don't have to accidentally break another one. Uh, oh, what do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Raven Rough Cut. Cat, please take good, very good care of the blaster. It has been my primary for several years and has served me very well. It has been through several mods in its in that time, including LEDs and a new worker motor for you to play with. If you have any questions, please email me and I will gladly answer them. Oh, that's shiny. Ooh. Looky there! Just, just for me? That would be lovely. Oh man, pop up sights. Weird magazine. All right, what do we got here? Oh, Captain, my Captain. I'll make this one short and sweet. Enjoy the goodies. Oh, you spoil me, sir. <laughs> Lego Iron Man and a Lego First Order Stormtrooper. Oh, read first, please. I'm not sure if you or anyone up there has gotten your hands on these new worker wheels yet. I personally am not a fan of them simply because I stripped out the thread on one of the wheels while trying to install them so unfortunately these are 
unusable in the blaster, but I'm sure you can find a use for them. Oh, I'm sure I can. We have ways of making them talk. Very nice. Barrel attachments. I can never have too many barrel attachments. A boatload of LEDs. Nice orange. That's my color. And I believe this is a cover for probably a hammer shot, which I just got a wicked bunch of hammer shot parts and now I've got something to go over them. Oh, you spoil me, sir. And another 12 round black mag. Very cool. We're just, just rolling in the dough, man. All right. What do we got here? It appears to be, ah, yes, yes. We have a blanket. Do like a nice fuzzy blanket. Chiefs. Look at that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Damn. Oh, smooth. Oh, there's the LEDs. Oh, there's the light for them. I wonder where the battery. Do they just run off the normal batteries, or there's another battery bag? I'll, I'll ask questions. That is gorgeous. Nice work on the epoxy, too. That is just beautiful. Uh, you're gonna have to, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to contact you because I don't remember what we agreed to trade for this. I know it was parts, I'm pretty sure. Um, and I'm pretty sure I have them. Uh, I will email you and we'll get the details. God, that is pretty. That is just, <laughs> I'm gonna have so many fun primaries to play with in the next war, it's gonna be amazing. Uh, because I've got this one and the uh, Firefly um, modulus that I got sent and I've got a couple of others that are oh that is beautiful beautiful work sir thank you and thank you for the goodies I will I will have entirely too much fun with them all right I love having a YouTube channel people send me the coolest stuff pistols pistols all right let's get it all back together okay I believe that is all the utterly amazing swag for today um, if I agreed to send you something or make you something or do something from you and you're still waiting on it, please send me an email and remind me my to-do list was eaten by gremlins, and while I've been able to remember some of them, there's just been too much, so, um, I know there's a bunch of people that sent me awesome stuff and I promised to make you something in return, drop me an email and remind me because... I really want to do it, and like I said, my to-do list, I'd written it all down with all the names and the addresses and what I was going to do, and it, it was eaten by gremlins. I think it got thrown away or destroyed or lost in the last great mod party, so um, email me, remind me, keep me honest. I want to do awesome things for my fans, and I need to get more organized. I need a secretary at this point, I swear. So, there you have it. Um, if... You want to contact me in any for anything, really. Uh, my email address and all my contact information is in the description of the videos. Um, email is preferred to my Etsy because I don't have my Etsy page up and running at the moment. I don't check it as often, but email, I get notifications to my phone, so that's the best way to get a hold of me. Alternatively, Facebook works as well. You can ping me on my Facebook page, uh, but uh, email seems to be the better way of getting a hold of me right now. So, yeah. Uh... If you want to ask me questions for next week's Q&A, remember, put it in the comments of this video and not some other video, because this is the one I check, and I do it, uh, the first two pages worth of questions, um, in order that they were submitted, so the sooner you get in, the more likely you're to get in, so, yeah, um, I think that's everything, thank you for watching.